the USS Northampton was the lead ship of her class and was named after the city of Northampton in Massachusetts, the home of former President Calvin Coolidge. And for the technical specifications of the class, please see the video on the class in general. She was commissioned in 1930 and originally classified as a light cruiser because of her thin armour, but would later be reclassified as a heavy cruiser due to her 8-inch guns. Appropriately enough, given her name, the Northampton was laid down in 1928 by Bethlehem Steel in Quincy, also in Massachusetts. After completion, she joined the Atlantic Fleet and was sent to the Mediterranean during the summer of 1930 and then recalled to take part in the fleet training schedule which took her to the Caribbean, the Panama Canal Zone and occasionally into the Pacific for exercises with other cruisers as well as ships of all types. After this year of excitement, she was reallocated and operated primarily in the Pacific from 1932, becoming one of six ships to receive the new RCA CXAM radar in 1940. Northampton was at sea escorting the carrier USS Enterprise during the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and would return to port the next day. A couple of days later the force sorted to search northeast of Oahu and then south to Johnston Island, then north again to the west of Lysiansky Island and Midway Atoll in an attempt to locate the Japanese task force or any ships they might have left behind. During this search, the USS Craven was damaged when it collided with Northampton during underway refuelling. These searches continued until January 1942, and the ship was detached alongside USS Salt Lake City to bombard the island of Votej in for, on the 1st of February. The bombardment not only demolished buildings and fuel dumps on the island, but also sank two Japanese ships. A similar assault was launched against Wake Island on the 24th of February despite serious enemy counterfire. The guns of Northampton and her force managed to start large fires on the island and sank a dredger in the lagoon. As Northampton retired from the island, enemy seaplanes, land-based planes and patrol craft attacked, but all of these were destroyed or repulsed. After further strikes, the Enterprise's task force, including Northampton, joined the Hornet for the Doolittle raid on Tokyo on the 18th of April. The replenishment needed after this mission meant that they just missed the Battle of Coral Sea. But the task force would be available for the Battle of Midway, where the American forces would manage to sink four carriers. In mid-August, the Northampton sailed for the Southwest Pacific to join in the Guadalcanal operation, where on the 15th of September, the force that she was part of was attacked by submarines, which damaged the USS Wasp and North Carolina, and struck the destroyer O'Brien only 800 yards away from Northampton's port beam. Wasp would later sink. During the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands on the 26th of October, Northampton went to the aid of Hornet, which had been mortally wounded by enemy aircraft, and provided anti-aircraft cover whilst attempting to take the stricken carrier in tow. Obviously doomed, the carrier was later sunk by destroyer torpedo and gunfire, and the American force retired to the southwest. Northampton next operated with a cruiser destroyer force to prevent the Japanese from reinforcing their troops on Guadalcanal. The Battle of Tassafaranga began 40 minutes before midnight on the 30th of November, with an American force of five cruisers and four destroyers ambushing a force of eight Japanese destroyers using radar. But although one of the destroyers was quickly hit and sunk, the Japanese fired wave after wave of long lance torpedoes, Two of the American cruisers took torpedo hits within the space of a minute, and ten minutes later, yet another one was hit, all being forced to retire from the action. Northampton and Honolulu, with six destroyers, were left to continue the fight. Close to the end of the engagement, Northampton was struck by two torpedoes, which tore a huge hole in her port side, ripping away decks and bulkheads. Flaming oil sprayed over the ship, she took on water rapidly and began to list, Three hours later, as she began to sink stern first, she had to be abandoned, and the survivors were picked up by destroyers. The battle as a whole was a tactical disaster, as three cruisers had been severely damaged and Northampton lost, in exchange for the loss of only one Japanese destroyer, despite the initial advantage in firepower and surprise. However, the Japanese force did not make their supply drops, and so the Japanese forces on the islands had been denied major reinforcement, albeit at great expense. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.
Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.